All right, in this video, we're going to take a look at uh, finding unit tangent vectors for a unit, or sorry, for a vector valued function. Uh, and the vector valued function we've got is r of t uh, equals 3 times e to the t i plus 2 e to the negative 3 t j plus 4 e to the 2 t k. Uh, and we're interested in when t is natural log of 2. Sometimes you have a specific t value, sometimes you don't. We'll, we'll take a look at it in general and at that specific value. Um, so the first thing you want to do is find the derivative of the vector valued function, which is another vector valued function. Um, and so the derivative of r, we will call r prime. Uh, and uh, we're just going to switch over to the component form here. Um, no, I guess I kept with the IJK notation. So um, I'll stick with the, the way I have it in my notes uh, and we'll do the IJK notation, but we'll just take derivatives with respect to t for each component function. So the derivative of 3 times e to the t uh, is 3 times e to the t. That one doesn't change. Um, I like to put little hats on the i, j, and k when I do them by hand. Um, and the derivative of 2e to the negative 3t, the chain rule bring a negative 3 out, and you get negative 6e to the negative 3t, and that's times j. And then the derivative of 4e to the 2t with respect to t, uh, that 2 in the exponent will come out and give us an 8e to the 2t times k. So there's the derivative, and you can evaluate that at natural log of 2 if you need to, uh, just replace all the t's with natural log of 2. Um, we're going to keep it general for now, move on to step 2, where we want to find the magnitude of the derivative. Um, so the magnitude of a vector is the square root of the sum of the squares of the components. Uh, and so it's no different here. Same notation with the double vertical bars, uh, derivative of r prime of t. Right, and then we've got uh, a big square root, um, and then we'll square each of these. Now, uh, when you square a product, you square each of the factors, so we'll square the 3, we'll square e to the t. Uh, when you square these exponentials, um, you multiply the exponent by 2. And you notice the i, j, and k disappear because this is no longer a vector, right? This is the magnitude of a vector, and so it's a scalar. All right, so simplifying that. And sometimes these will simplify a lot. You'll see a lot of sine squared plus cosine squared going to 1, that kind of trick. Um, all here we can do is, is actually ooh, grab a square is actually square these things. So squaring three, I get nine. Squaring e to the t, I get e to the two t. Negative goes away. Uh, squaring the six, I get 36. Squaring e to the negative three t, I get e to the negative six t. Uh, squaring eight, I get 64. And squaring e to the two t, I get e to the four t. Now, if all those exponentials had the same exponent, they would be like terms, we could combine them. But as it stands here, the best you could do is factor, and I don't think that really helps. So we're going to leave that there as our magnitude. Now we take the derivative from step one, and we divide by the magnitude from step two. Um, this is sort of normalizing the vector, right? When you divide a vector by its magnitude, um, then you get a vector in the same direction, but it has magnitude one. And that's what we mean by unit. Unit vector is a vector of magnitude one. Um, so we're going to do that with the vector function. Right, and uh, and then this notation for this is a big capital T. This is a vector, and it is a function of T. Um, and so we'll have our result from step one. Now, technically, each of these components is divided by the magnitude. So if the magnitude did simplify to a constant or something much simpler, we could go in and kind of write it that way. Um, but writing that denominator three times would be a little too much. And so we're going to kind of keep it factored off here in the bottom. So depending on where you're at on the vector value function on that space curve for different values of t, you'll have a different uh, derivative, different magnitude, and different unit tangent vector, uh, but you could just get any of those by evaluating these 
functions at t, right? These are all functions of t. Um, one and three, steps one and three are vector functions. Step two is a scalar function. So I want to show an example of that. And in step four, we're going to use the um, value we had up here that t was natural log of two. And we're going to evaluate the function in step three at natural log of two. So we'll replace all the t's with natural log of two. Um, so we'll do a little kind of side calculation here. If I have um, e to the t, and that'll be e to the natural log of two. Um, so when the e base e and the so when the logarithm and the base of the exponential match, they they are inverses and they will cancel. Um, they have to have nothing between them. So in this case, that would go right to a two. Um, so there we're fine. And so this will be three times two, right? That e to the t turns into a two. Um, now, when we have another number there like this, right? e to the negative 3t is e to the negative 3 times natural log of 2. You can't cancel the e and the natural log there. Um, but we just learned that the um, multiplication of an exponent is equivalent to raising the whole thing to a power. And so what we're going to get around that is to write it as e to the natural log of 2 raised to the negative 3, kind of undoing what we did when we squared uh, inverse of the process we used when we squared the exponentials in step two. Uh, and then, of course, that goes to a two, right? Same reason from before. So we get to the negative three, which is one over eight. Uh, and then with the same thing here with the e to the two t, that'll be um, two squared. Right, the two becomes the exponent two. Right. We can reuse a lot of that same stuff in the denominator. Um, this e to the two t would be two squared. And e to the negative six t would be two to the negative six. And e to the four t would be two to the four. So you're just taking whatever coefficients there in front of t, and you're making that the new exponent over 2. All right. So now this is a constant vector. Um, and you can simplify the denominator um, a little bit. And it ends up being uh, 1 over square root of 1060.2. 5625, right? And, uh, and then we simplify the vector components 6i minus 3 fourths j plus 32k. So again, each of those, the 6, the negative 3 fourths, and the 32, those are all divided by square root of 1060.5625. Um, and you want to keep that in mind when you do something with that. But that's our unit tangent vector function and then a specific value of that function. Um, so to validate, you know, we want to make sure that we have a unit tangent vector. So to make sure that it's a unit vector at all, you got to make sure that the length is one. And so that's one validation technique. Um, beyond knowing that it's a unit vector, you want to make sure it's the tangent vector to the curve. Um, and to do that, you kind of need to graph it and make sure it looks like it's tangent to the curve. So we'll check both of those things. Um, let's um, just scroll up a little.
So to check that it is length one, we find the magnitude of this vector. Uh, which is the square root of the sum of the squares. Um, and if you do that for the top part, uh, six squared, and then negative three fourths squared, and then 32 squared. Um, and then that will give you the square root of 1060. 0.5625. Um, but then it's divided by that, right? And so then when you divide by 1060.5625, uh, you get one. So it is indeed a unit vector because the length is one. So to check that it's tangent, we will graph it. And um, I'm going to use GeoGebra here. So if we go to our GeoGebra and then set the calculator to 3D calculator. Uh, and then again, we'll kind of program in the component functions here. And then we define the curve, R, curve. And pick the second one for the space curve, and then just put in x of t, y of t, z of t. We saw how to do this before, and you could see it's kind of telling you what to do. t, negative 10 to 10 is good starting values values. Uh, and you can see the curve. So we don't want to see the individual components. Um, you can see the space curve there. Maybe zoom out a little to get a better view of it. So there is our, our space curve. All right. And now we're going to um, look at the specific point when t is equal to natural log of two. And we're gonna create a point that is at r of t. Um, so there's the point you can see. Um, let's make it. So there's the point p that uh, we are interested in. And you can, instead of just doing a general zoom out, you can do move graphics view and maybe just zoom out in that direction there. And so we've got that point. Um, it's nice to see the vector going there. So V equals vector, and then we'll use P for that. So there's the vector pointing. to that point. Because remember the space curve here is the terminal points of the vectors defined by the vector value function. All right, now we wanna put on the unit tangent vector. Now we have our result um, from step four, and I'm going to call it T. And uh, it was six, negative three-fourths, 
32. And then divide by square root of 1060.565. I didn't like that. All right, so we're going <laughs> to create a point. This is how I had it before. I thought I could shortcut something. So we create a point A. Um, and then we'll create a vector that goes to that point. And T is the unit tangent vector. Now, by default, it's drawing that vector from the origin, right? Um, and we actually want to see that vector drawn at the point P. In fact, the point P is the initial point of that vector. Um, and so we will need to use the feature in here that says, uh, I think it's called vector from a point. Yeah, vector from a point. And when you click on that, it'll say select the starting point and the vector. So the starting point is P, and then the vector is tiny. So I'm going to zoom in to grab it there. That worked. I think it did. So then it translated that to a new spot. So we don't need the little vector from the origin. Let's get rid of that or hide it. We don't need that point, the terminal point of the vector. Um, and let's actually make this a different color. This is our, our new vector. I'll make it red or no, green. All right, and then it's a matter of zooming in on this. You notice if I just do a general zoom, it it doesn't really work. So I need to move graphics view and kind of zoom this in. And kind of use this along with the scrolling, zooming in and then moving these so that I keep that point there. All right, I think that's it. So then we finally get a decent view of it. And again, what we're looking for is that the, the little green vector is tangent to the curve. So you want to kind of move it around and make sure that it's pointing in the same direction as the curve. Um, and it is, right? If it was pointed in some other direction, then we would catch it and it wouldn't be tangent to the curve. So well, that's your graphical validation for this. And that wraps up the methodology for unit tangent vectors. See you in the next video.